Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Every so often, something comes along that is evolutionary? Revolutionary? I'm not 100% sure which, but what I have here is two different envelopes, and what I like best about these things is that what is inside of them is magic. It is something that isn't supposed to work. Something that's actually supposed to do quite the opposite of what it does. It's a Faraday cloth, roll up J-pole. And if you know what Faraday cloth is, it's actually supposed to block RF signals. However, the RF signals it's supposed to block are the ones of the wavelength that are bigger than what is in the mesh. And my friend Ben, ham radio rookie, decided he was gonna try and figure out if he could make an antenna out of something that was supposed to block signals. And it does. It works pretty surprisingly well. I'm gonna do another video on how these things work in the field, actually communicating with stuff you know, real world practical demonstration. But right now I wanna do some science. I wanna put these things on the nano VNA and see how they nano VNA out. All right, so this is the Faraday cloth roll up J pole. And J poles are pretty interesting. So you can see that it just keeps going and going and going. And this is actually a bit longer than a typical roll up J pole would be because of the velocity factor of the Faraday cloth. And then here is the BNC connector that gets you connected to your radio device. And it is electrically connected through these two studs. And it's just plain old magic. It's actually a little printed circuit board type device. And it's pretty slick. So that gets you your element and your counterpoise or your radiating element and your other half of your dipole or whatever the case may be. And then you can see, it gets to a point that's upside down. You can see but it gets to a point where one of them stops and the other one keeps on going. And that's kind of the magic of J-poles is how they all work. I'll leave a link to an article in the description down below talking about how J-poles work. And then there's this little buckle up top. This is also 3D printed, but this will help you to hook it to the top of a mast using like an S-beaner or something along those lines. And we'll do that eventually. But for now, I just want to test the antenna and see if it works. So let's get after it. So what we have is our standard nano VNA, and I need to calibrate this thing for what we're going to be doing today. I'm gonna to do a test on two meters and a test on 70 centimeters. And let's set our, let's go back to the, the main menu. This is your main menu. First things first, set your stimulus. I wanna set my stimulus to be a little bit bigger than the two meter band. The two meter band is 144 to 148. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set my start frequency to 100 megahertz. And I'm gonna set my stop frequency to 200 megahertz. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna set up my traces. Trace zero I want on for SWR and trace one I want on for my Smith chart. I want it to be channel zero for my Smith chart and then I want it to be channel zero for my SWR reading. And back there and then we do calibrate and we do calibrate. I'm gonna calibrate the open and that is now calibrated. And then I'm gonna take my short and I'm gonna put that onto channel zero and I'm gonna calibrate my short. And when you run this, you can see a blue line run across the top as it's doing its calibration measurement. Take the short off and we're gonna calibrate the load. And then I'm not gonna do isolation or through test, so I am done. It's gonna ask me where I want to save it. This is the two meter band. I'm gonna save it to position three. And then we'll recall that and change later on as we go through. I'm also gonna test these antennas out on 70 centimeters because they are harmonically related. And therefore a lot of times you can get 70 centimeters out of a two meter antenna. So again, all of the marker settings and everything are correct, but the stimulus range is wrong. And the 70 centimeter band is 420 to 450. So let's go back and change our stimulus. And we're gonna start at 400 megahertz. And we're going to stop at, I don't know, let's say, where does it end? Ends at 450. Let's stop at 500 megahertz. And that'll give you a little bit on either side so you can see the, the dip. And then we're gonna go in and we're going to calibrate again. Calibrate. I need to remove the load. And we'll calibrate the open. And then we'll calibrate the short. And then we will calibrate the load. And then again, no isolation, no through test for this exercise. And then we will save this to position four. So two meters is position three, 70 centimeters is position four. And there is our calibration. The next thing that we have to deal with is adapters. I am going to be running the same coax for all the antennas in the test, but for 
two of the antennas, I need to use one set of adapters to get it plugged in. And then for the other antenna, I need to use this adapter to get it plugged in and working. So all I'm really replacing out of the entire setup are these two adapters. This one's really high quality. It's nice silver. You can see the, the tarnish, the patina on it. And this one is absolute junk. And it is what it is. And this is kind of the thing about, you know, non-laboratory grade uh, ham radio testing. And it's all fine. I just want to get an idea of how this thing looks and I want to share it with you. And here we go. I mean, who's going to have thousands of dollars worth of laboratory equipment to test a ham radio antenna? It's, it doesn't make any sense. So let's get after it. First up is the Ed Fong antenna attached to the end of this. So let's get our adapter chain connected. We need to remove our load. And the Ed Fong antenna is a fantastic antenna and these Faraday these Faraday, I did say it right, these Faraday antennas are fantastic antennas. I am not trying to say that one is better than the other. I'm just trying to give you, you know, a watermark, a reference, a whatever. And this is the adapter that I need for the Ed Fong antenna. Get that plugged in and screwed down nice and tight. And then plug this guy here in. Turn our Nano VNA on and we need to recall a saved configuration. And we're going to do two meters first, which we saved as three. And now you can see our Smith chart is a nice little spiral and you can see our SWR sweep has a little dip in it and that dip is 145, 144, and the SWR is 1.8. And let's see what we can do about that. Tighten down the connectors. Okay, so part of what's going on here is that the Nano VNA only has so many sweep points that it can do on its screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten up the stimulus range on this and I'm gonna change the start to narrow it down. So we're still within the same calibrated range. We're just at a tighter stimulus. So 144 megahertz is the start. And look at that, it's getting better already. And the stop is 148 megahertz. And there we go, 1.8 to one SWR at 145, 120. Let's get up to 146.52 and see what we look like. The national calling frequency, 1.7 to one SWR right up here. Fantastic. And our Smith chart, look at our Smith chart. That's pretty much what you want. You want this little intersection here and it's gonna be hard to see on the camera, but there is a vertical line here and a horizontal line here and one of your circles overlaps all at this center point and you want that marker to be as close to that center point as possible. We're at 49.4 something and that is fantastic. You know, I mean 50 is what you're shooting for and that's really close to 50 at 49.4, 1.7 to one SWR, fantastic. Let's switch this over to 70 centimeters so we need to go back and we need to recall our calibration of four. And then you can see that that changed our stimulus to 400 to 500 and our Smith chart is all circly crazy wonky and our SWR is crazy, but our SWR is crazy because we're at 400 megahertz, we're outside of the band. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna tighten it up to 420 to 450. So let's go back, let's do stimulus, let's do start, 420 megahertz. Let's do stop, let's do 450 megahertz. And there we go. That's not terrible. Where are we best? 1.3, 1 1.3 1 .3 is great. 130 at 441.9 megahertz. That is fantastic. Let's get back to where that is. Yeah, so 38.6 ohms. And we're pretty close to that center mark. Vertically, we're on the center mark. And horizontally, we are over to the left of it a little bit. That center mark I'm looking at for the Smith chart. That is great. That is the Ed Fong roll-up J-pole. And now while we are still configured for 70 centimeters, let's switch this thing over to the Ham Radio Rookie 70 centimeter Faraday. This is a new one from Rookie and it is so tiny. It is cool. We'll get you some measurements here in a bit. But first thing I need to do is switch over the adapters because it has different mating points. And we are already all the way zoomed in, so it's gonna look pretty good to begin with, I'm sure. Oh yeah, and we're 1.4, 1.5, 1.6. These are all perfectly usable. That line is nice and flat. And 1.26, yeah, it moves a little bit, but that's because I'm here, because I'm present. Okay, so that is 445.800 megahertz. We are at 40-ish, 39.9 or 40.4. And you can see the Smith chart is moving a little bit, so that's 39 to 40.4 
ohms of resistance at your feed point, your impedance at your feed point, and you know, 1.29 to 1.30 to 1 SWR. That looks pretty good. While we're here on the 70 centimeter roll up a J pole for Ham Radio Rookie, let's recall four, which is gonna change our stimulus wide like we were on the Ed Fong roll up J pole, so you can get a comparison view of that. This is the Rookie's two meter roll up J pole. We're gonna recall our third config, which is our two meter config. You can see our start is 100, our stop is 200 megahertz. And that chart looks pretty good. It's already found 1.49 to one SWR at 47 ohms of impedance. And that's at 145 megahertz even. But what I wanna do is I wanna do the same thing that we did on previous tests and I wanna tighten this up. So we're gonna change the stimulus to 144 to 148. Stimulus start. 144 megahertz, stop 148 megahertz, and that is only in the band. And now as we look at it, where is our low point? 38, 37, 36, 32, 31, 128, 127, 126, 125, 124, 123, 122, 121, 119. 116, 115, 114, it keeps getting better. 112, 111, 10, 107, and then I put it down. <laughs> Yeah, depending on how it sets, it changes a little bit, but that's the nature of what we're doing right now. So let's say 1.1, 1.08 now, at 46 ohms of feed line impedance, a feed point impedance, and it's pretty flat across the band. Now this is the two meter roll up J pole, which will also have a little bit of working skills on 70 centimeters. So we're gonna switch it over to 70 centimeter config by recalling number four. And you can see now we're at 400 to 500. And we have a nice little circle there. All right, so that is 1.47 to 167 ohms of resistance, of impedance at the feed point. And 1.08, so again, it's, it's good at the higher end of the bands. Actually, we're out of the band now at 495. Let's do the same thing. Let's shrink this down. Stimulus start, 420. Stop, 450. And yeah, see how you tighten it up and you get more data points and it starts looking different. So at the lower point of the bands, it is pretty good. 1.9, 1.89 with 91 ohms of feed point impedance. And your HT should be able to handle that, but this is why he makes the 70 centimeter Faraday instead. If you don't have one of these, this is a must for ham radio. This is 50 meters or 165 foot of roll up tape. And for this measurement, it actually starts at the end of the hook, but two of these antennas do not start at the end of the hook. So I'm gonna give you an average measurement and it's only for comparison purposes anyway. The meter side, the metric side does start here at the line but the inch side starts back here at the hook because that's five inches from the end of the hook to the five inch mark. So we're just gonna give you some comparison numbers between the three different antennas. This is the shortest one of the bunch to the feed point. The Faraday is 65 centimeters or two foot two inches. The Ed Fong antenna is a little stronger copper so it's harder to get a straight measurement on it because of the bends in the copper. But to my thumb, we are 30.4 centimeters, or we are four foot five inches for comparison. And then this is the two meter Faraday, and that is five foot nine inches to the feed point, 75 centimeters to the feed point. There's your 70, and there is your five. And it's really hard to tell where the Ed Fong J pole makes its electrical connection because there is that little bit of a loop there. And on the Ed Fong antenna, it's got a cut in the wire at the appropriate level. And my assumption was that there is some magic going on there because that is the bottom of the ladder line. And there isn't a crossover point that I can see between the clip and the bottom of the window line. All right, folks, we did some science. And there's a couple of weird things that go on. The Faraday tends to move about in the breeze a little bit, and that moves the coax in relationship to me, and I'm part of the antenna near field, but I was part of the near field for all of these. It's just, for the Ed Fong, it has a little more structure to it. 
so it doesn't move as much. Your ratings will change, your measurements will change depending on your own personal environment. Do you have it attached to a carbon fiber mass? Do you have it hanging off of a tree limb? Are you over open ground? Are you over dry ground? Where is the RF ground versus where is the electrical ground in your neighborhood? All kinds of things. The point wasn't to show you specific high quality laboratory grade measurements. The point was to show you a comparison using as much of the same stuff as we possibly could. And really, I was just curious as to how the SWR plots looked on these antennas. I think they look pretty good. If you compare these to an HT antenna, the rubber duck that your radio comes with, you won't be surprised at how bad that rubber duck really is. This thing will do a lot of getting out. If you want to know what these antennas can actually do, there's a video right over here where I do an antenna shootout. Thanks for being awesome. I'll be over there waiting for you.